When you strip it down to basics, a generation three pressurized water reactor works on similar principles to your electric kettle. Fuel rods filled with uranium pellets are lowered into water in the center of the reactor. When the uranium atoms in the fuel pellets split apart, they release enormous quantities of heat that warms up the water to around 300 degrees centigrade. The hot water from the reactor's core then goes through a heat exchanger where it heats a separate supply of water, turning it into high pressure steam. That steam is used to power a spinning turbine, which generates electricity. When it comes to disposal, this is what you're disposing of. These are the fuel rods. Luckily, these are just models, but this is an exact replica of what a, a fuel rod would look like filled with uh, uranium. And this is lowered into water in the reactor, and that's what heats the water, superheats it, about 300 degrees centigrade, puts off steam under pressure, and that steam will then uh, power the turbine in the neighbouring turbine hall. So that's the practice. These last about five years. Every five years, these will have to be taken out, new ones replaced. There's about 250 of these in that reactor, so about uh, 50 of those uh, are getting replaced every year. Have I done my maths right? Check up. But anyway, you pull these out, then what do you do with them? They've still, of course, have got uh, nuclear radiation and they need to be put somewhere safe. So this is what they do. Well, I told you this was like Disney World for nuclear bores. This is one of the copper containers. So this is the copper canister. This is exactly the type of thing that the nuclear spent nuclear fuel rods will be contained in. Uh, first of all, they'll be put in this contraption. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 of these things. Then packed into here and sealed. So once it's in there, no problem, no radiation whatsoever. But then comes the overkill. Nuclear waste from the Okiloto 1 and 2 reactors has been safely stored on the site for almost 45 years. Now, however, a final resting place for the spent uranium is being built less than two kilometres away. This is Onkelo, the world's first final repository for used nuclear fuel. There's not a lot to see on the surface. Everything important happens deep below the ground. Underground final disposal will be carried out at a depth of more than 400 metres in a final disposal facility built into the bedrock of Okiloto. The transfer of the canister from the above ground encapsulation plant to the final disposal facility takes place by a canister hoist. In a few months time, you won't be able to come down here with, with or without this uh, security gear because you'll be putting the spent canister, or sorry, the canisters to contain the spent, spent rods will be inserted up there in the ceiling. Think of it like a giant soda machine where the soda canister goes up and gets filled with gas. In this case, it'll be filled with spent fuel rods. The gas will be extracted from them and a, and a special gas will be put in to hold it. They're transported down here and then round this corner, straight into here, which will be an elevator. So in, by the end of the year, you won't be able to come here because you'll be putting spent nuclear, uh, nuclear rods or you know, spent rods will be in, in the containers round the corner down here transported down to 430 metres below ground, and then they'll be buried. Okay, so the two things they throw at uh, nuclear is how does it cost, how do you get rid of the waste? We've answered the first, now let's answer the second. This is how you get rid of the waste. First of all, good news is on the experience here at Oikiloto, you can keep the waste on site for 45 years, no problem, contained in one building. After that, you look for a, what they call a, a final disposal, and it'll take place in here. This is a tunnel, I think, less than two kilometres from the 
nuclear power plant and we are 430 meters below ground here in rock that has not moved for 1.9 billion years since it was created. These huge tunnels have been artificially dug with little holes, well I say little holes, quite big holes under there where the canisters will come. Disposal holes are drilled in the tunnels using a purpose-built boring machine. Underground disposal begins when lower bentonite clay blocks are installed in the disposal hole. Bentonite prevents water from moving in proximity of the canister and protects the canister from slide rock movements. The canister is transferred by a remote controlled mover from the canister storage to the loading location of the canister transfer and installation vehicle. From the loading location, the canister is lifted inside the radiation protective shield of the installation vehicle, and the shield is glided to a horizontal position during transport. The radiation protective shield reduces the radiation coming from the canister so that the vehicle can be approached by the operating personnel if necessary. The installation vehicle transfers the canister from loading station to disposal tunnel, then installs the canister into the disposal hole with an accuracy of a mere few millimeters. Once the canister is lowered into the hole, the upper part of the hole is also filled with bentonite buffer blocks, and the tunnel is backfilled with granular bentonite clay. The tunnel backfill prevents water from flowing in the tunnels and holds the buffer material in place. When the entire disposal tunnel has been filled with the granular bentonite clay material, a thick concrete plug will be casted at its end. Disposal will continue until all the spent nuclear fuel at Posiva's possession has been safely disposed of in the Okiluoto bedrock. After this, all tunnels and shafts leading to it will be closed, and the built structures at ground level will be dismantled. <laughs>